So you have minstrel stats for everything you can get. Yeah, that's the gear. The uh, Rune of Durability works really well. Other runes, you'll see people with um, monk runes for more healing or Rune of Water. Always, always need Sigil of Energy. Yeah, and you can definitely play it without 100% Minstrel if you have some, you know, soldiers or clerics or something, a little Condi, that's, that's okay. Get my food going here. Just that. All right, we'll probably have a few others dropping in, but we'll get it going. All right, so Firebrand is unusual. It is not like Standard Guardian or Dragon Hunter that came after, and, and a lot of people don't like it and don't want to play it because they're so used to go how Guardian used to be and blah, blah. The long and short of it is that it cannot be beat. The the boons and the support that it provides cannot be equaled at all for any other classes that exist. The groups live and die by their guardians. If they don't have guardians, they melt. Just straight up every time. Yeah, so if you haven't played guardian, perfect. You have no bad habits. You're you're yeah, you're gonna be probably better off than, you know, some other people that have played other things. So the the books, the F1, F2, F3, the tomes, if you will, that's high value. Those you might only get once per fight, just because of cooldowns and such. And generally, you are starting with book three. And then progressing to book two, if we need heals. Some of the confusion people have on Guardian is that it is a healer. It is not a pure healer. It's not that. That is more of an Ellie. The job of the Guardian is much more on the side of boons and blocks than just straight healing. If you can block and boon correctly, you don't have to heal. And your staff and shield skills and your mantras are just as good, or just as valuable as, as your books. Alright, so standard fight here. Say these codons up here were enemy players. You know, we're stacking up. Target identified. You hear the commander saying, empower. So you're starting with your staff. You're on your staff four, giving everybody might. Now, here's, here's one of the things Guardians screw up. And you don't have bad habits, so you're not going to do this. This. Guardians always want to put their staff three on people, so they're stacking swiftness, stacking swiftness, stacking swiftness. In theory, it's great. But it interferes with other fields. And so when we're calling for stealth, what we're calling for is a smoke field from our NG that everyone then blasts for a combo that, that is stealth. So, in this case, your blast is your staff 2. If you high level them, you see, like, staff 3 has combo field light. Staff 2 has combo field blast, combo finisher blast. So, one of your quick go-to heal Condi clears is the 2-3 combo. Like, if, you would, if we were to need heals in Condi clear, or if someone up ahead were to need it, you do the 3 and the 2 together. It's like right on our feet. 3-2. And you should see it pop up and say Area Condi Cleanse. So not only you get the healing effect, you get the Condi Cleanse of the combo. Hitting five people. 
So that's just with the light field. If it combos with fire, let me go into my book here. So same deal. I got a fire field I'm going to put down and then do your staff two in that. So fire field, staff two. So that's stacking might. So we'll call it for fire field sometimes. Ellie's will put them down. We do that for might. Same idea if we had NG here. We put that down. We blast it with our staff two. We all get stealth. So for that reason, try not to put your staff three on us when we're stacking, or those fields are going to conflict, and we're going to not get stealth. But your staff two is great. You can blast stuff, you know, water for water for uh, heals, fire for might, and that's that's just you know even more support that you can put out. But yeah, so combos and the starting introduction with the empowering. Now, here's here's where it gets situational, and here's where Guardian requires more brain power than, I think, than, you know, NG or Ellie or, or half the other classes. You have to know how range works, and you have to know how long your boons last. And that's not the easiest thing in the world. And your boons last longer the more minstrel you have because of the concentration stat that increases your, uh, your boon duration. So, like, I'm sitting at what am I? My boon duration is 44% higher than usual. So I'm doing might, getting in power. Now, aside from the might, which is great, the really your main job as guardian is stability. You hear it stab, you know, stab up, that's stability. It's not talking about stabbing with a knife, it's stability. So, you're kind of really the only source of stability in the game. The Rev can put out a little bit with their Dwarf Road. The NG has a little bit. And then it's just you. Only you. You, you are the only way your group can stand up and not get knocked over. So, your aim is to try to pump that out before we're in range of getting knocked down. You'll hear sometimes little stabs or pre-stabs. You need to be hitting your source of stability before they can hit us. It doesn't do good if, if we're already knocked down. You have to prevent damage. So, uh, mantras are your best thing. You have your heal skill, you have your Condi Clear mantra, and then you have your elite, your uh, bell, the Potent of Freedom mantra. Before you get in any fight, you have to charge those up. They have to be ready to go. You have to charge them all. You have to have them as your underwater skills too. Otherwise, if we go underwater, you have to charge them all over again. If we switch maps, you got to charge them again. If you die, you got to charge them again. Just, just something to keep track of. Mesmers have similar mantras, but yeah. So your mantras are all now charged up, and going into range. Once we think those enemies are close enough to hit us. You need to either be hitting your elite or your standard ground. So the elite doesn't last as long. If you look at, uh, at hitting the elite, it'll give you stability. But it's kind of a short one. It only lasts about three seconds. You hit the standard ground. It's five sec or five stacks. And it lasts quite a bit longer, and it hits 10 people. I'm sorry, it doesn't hit 10 people. They, they changed that. It used to hit 10 people. So your, your stand your ground is your big stab. Your elite is your little stab. And with those two, plus your book three, you need to maintain stability on your group all the time once we're in range. Hey, we're just running around. Don't. Don't waste it. But once we're close enough for them to hit us... Your job is mainly that. You have a lot of other things to do with removing Condi and Aegis and lines and everything else, but the number one thing you cannot forget is the stability. So right about here, you're thinking about that. You're thinking they might just be close enough to have a ranger that can pew pew us. So if the if the commander's not saying it, you just need to instinctually do it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hit my standard ground. Boop, we got stability. We're going to move up. And so the stability is running off, running off, running off, running off, running off. It's about halfway. 
Well, now I gotta hit some more. I gotta hit my elite for more stability. And we'll just auto attack this guy. He's not gonna hurt as much. So just, and I mean, we have excessive guardians here, so our, our stability is gonna overlap. But in the case where you're one of five, if you're in a party of five, you're all the stability for them. So it's just you. You're you're giving everything. And so your stability you're pumping out with those two. The other thing that you're working on a lot is protection and Aegis. So you have protection in your heal skill, which is used preventatively. Your heal skill is not a heal for you because you have three charges. You can use it to give your allies protection which reduces the damage they take. So you've got that in the mix. You've got your stability in the mix. And then you have Aegis. So Aegis you've got in your shield. And this is more when we're up close. So if we were doing that again and we had stacked and we ended powered, once you're going in close, you're swapping weapons. You're getting into your shield. Because this is great. The stat, the shield 5 is amazing. Negates all projectiles from rangers, from thieves, from revs. And it has a second tap. You can hit it a second time for a heal. So I, ideally, you just have that running until it's about up. And then if we need a heal, you can hit it a second time. Or, and... Uh, if we have proper guardians and they're paying attention, we can cover our whole group with those. So your shield 4 is the Aegis I was talking about. More protection. Your mace has more Aegis. So if you think about it, I mean, the shield mace, that's your defensive set. The staff is more offensive slash utility boons. And we capped it. All right. So the Staff 3 is good for swiftness on the run. If we're moving around, you want to cast that ahead of us versus just when we're standing still and we're just, you know, pulsing it. So as we're running, try to get it ahead of us and like anticipate where we're going. Or you can just put it on the people in the back so they kind of catch up. Um, all right, we got a little jump here. You didn't see that. <laughs> oh. Oh, Salamander. <laughs> <laughs> There's a waypoint. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be there soon. Actually, we'll waypoint and go from there because I don't know where I'm going per se on this map. Let's go to that waypoint. And no supply here. All right. All right, so long range, we've got our staff, we've got our empowers. Let's go out to this bridge here, because this is a good illustration. All right, so a choke point. You guys probably know what that is, but it's kind of what it sounds like. It kind of funnels the enemy into a narrow spot like this bridge here. So if you're hearing lines, if you're hearing CCs, at long range, you should already be on your staff. So it's staff five, those things out there. Decent range. You can throw that at 1,200 range. So really, almost as far as anybody else, aside from Ranger. That is strong. That is really strong. If they're coming at us, and our Guardians are on their game, and we all drop that, at the very least, their stability is gone. If not, they're just stopped dead in their tracks. And, you know, we pile on the Shades on top of that, and, and the, the Rev Hammers. We should be able to stop a Zerg in their tracks if they're at least similar size to us. It's just kind of practice and timing that we're a bit lacking on. So yeah, so CC or lines, that's what we're talking about. That's staff five. Real quick, throw it out there, and then you're back to your business of supporting the group. Okay, so we're in a narrow choke like this. We've put down some marks or some lines. We've got our stability up. And now it looks like we're about to push. This is the book three moment. And this is where 
timing and judgment calls come into play. A lot of commanders will want it done differently. And if you have a lot of guardians, if you have two guardians in a party, one of you would be starting in book three, one of you would be starting in book two. Because it is possible to overdo this stability. But generally, we don't have that many guardians. So pretending like you're the only one, you've already done your basic stability with your mantra. We've already mited up with Empower. Maybe we did a line if we can catch them. And now it's it's on. Either there's a call for book three, or there's a call for reflex. That's when you're hitting book three. Or, you know, if, if it's a push, if, if the fight has started. That's, that's book three time. All right, so the the theme in the books is five, four, three. You have extra stability. You have all the boons in the five, plus the crazy toughness boost. Four is your anti condi, your resistance, as well as a stun break for yourself. And then three is the reflex. If you hear your reflex, that's that's kind of. Aside from the four, which the resistance is really, really, really strong, that three bubble is is really, really lifesaver. So it's it looks visually different than the warrior bubble. It is smaller, but it has the same the same yellow tint to it. And these ref so your your shield five just blocks. This one reflects. So this one will send arrows back at their source. If there's a ranger pew pewing us, if hell even a golem is shooting at us, we, we can use these to send their shots back at them. It doesn't work against arrow carts or cannons, but anything a player can throw at us that's a projectile and not a magic is going right back at them. And so, you know, the uses are just, you know, us protecting ourselves, but also putting it out there in the you know where closer to the enemy to deny them an angle to shoot us line of sight if you will and it can also be used you know if, if we're pushing forward particularly against a, a lot of pew pew if we have the the proper reflex we can push towards them you know i can say you know reflex ahead and then we'll go forward and we'll get into that reflect and then we'll put another reflect up and then we'll go forward and get into the other reflect Sometimes it gets that bad. Oh, not most of the time, but if, if there's a lot of rangers hitting us, we have to get to that point. All right, so that's the book three main stuff, is the five, four, three. You have a taunt on the two. You can spam one to get stability out. So if you're out of other stuff to give stability, you can just press the one, and it, it does kind of a cone in front of you, so you have to face the group. That's another thing to be aware of. So... All right, so that's that's the scenario I was actually in today. Okay, so guardian, don't none of you guys move. I, I had to push all the way through the other side. Our group got stuck, so I had to turn around and spam stability at them so that they could get out. So be aware that your stuff is directional. It is it is a cone in front of you. So if you're not facing the allies, you're not helping them. All right, so that's the book three. The book two, same idea. You want to hit the five first because it boosts your other heals. Then you have your water field, which can be blasted with your staff, or you know other people can blast it. The three isn't so great. The three is okay. Uh, in water, the two is probably actually better because we get a lot of condition. There's not a lot of other condition removal you've got. But the three is still decent. And the same deal. If, if it's an oh shit moment and, you know, everybody's dying, face them and spam one. It, it's just heal, 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 heal. So, yeah, that's the basics of the books. We're starting with our staff and power. We're going to go through it here. Stuff's kind of recharging, but it should be about ready when we're done. We're getting our stability up. We're going to charge to the gate on the left here. 
Putting some swiftness in front of us. Alright. About close. We go book three. Gotta reflect so he can't shoot me. Pushing up. Maintain stability. I'm gonna arc around, get more reflects all over the place. So that wears out. I'm going into shield. Using my mace. And if if you hear calls for water, that's that's the sign you need to go into book two. Ideally, you don't have to get there. That that's if if a fight goes well, you shouldn't get to book two. You should be able to stick with your other stuff in your book three. And hopefully the NGs and the Ellies are covering us enough where you don't have to go to book two. Okay, so that's kind of all the skills aside from your pod ground and your conclear mantra. Which the conclear mantra is reactive. You you need to kind of start realizing when we're getting hit by condies and pay attention to those red things that pop up over your right utility bar. Because that's when you're going to need to hit that condi clear mantra. Or the staff 2-3 combo if you have range to hit him with that. Alright, we're going to drop off the side. So the Hollowed Ground, that's kind of the slot that's the optional skill, where in, in different situations it might, might be swapped out for, say, a Wall of Reflect if we're getting shot at a lot. If there was a lot of conditions, it might be Purging Flames. Um, it might be a Quickness Mantra, just kind of like situationally, but generally stability is the biggest need, so that's where that Hollowed Ground comes in. Uh, yeah, actually, if you can, yeah, go to staff, everybody. We're going to blast some smoke to test the stealth here. So, yeah, drop stealth whenever you're ready. Blast, 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 staff two in that. All right, so I think we got a dark field out of that one instead of a smoke. Yeah, so the hollowed ground would be for the choke points, kind of like the line we were talking about, but more offensively. Like, say we were pushing into this lore, we'd put the hollowed ground in front, or like where we think the fight's going to be. Because it pulses more stability for us, kind of like the road. It's kind of a safe zone. So we've got that. We add in our reflex, and we've just got an area we don't have to worry about too much. We'll have to, you know, step out of a well to the side or something, but... Generally, we're okay for a minute. We can breathe. Ready for a quick empower. Stab up, and we're going to push into the Lord here. Going to shield. Getting protection, getting Aegis. Um, don't, uh, don't slack on your auto attack either. Your mace auto attack 3 is actually a heal. So don't forget to get in your auto attacks. Yes. Not a lot of damage we got here, really. But... <laughs> now, the... Uh... The passive traits that you've got in your build are a lot of what makes this work so well. Related to... Selfless Daring. So your dodge rolls heal people. Which is of course boosted by your food and healing power and all that. 
and you're rocking Sigil of Energy on each energy, energy set so you can swap weapons and dodge roll more. So if, if I seem to be moving, or any Guardian's moving weirdly, they're trying to dodge roll heal you. So proactively dodge towards allies that need healing. It, it, the heal happens where you end the dodge roll. So aggressively dodge. Dodge a lot. Use that. On, on paper, you can get a lot of heals out of that, just out of you know regular gameplay. All right, let's head over this way. Get swiftness on the run. I could outrun a centaur. Got this sure. Uh, any questions on Firebrand so far? Book one is really damage and only damage. The two good things that you do have in it are the pull. And then the, the five is a good damage boost for other people, which is helpful. But it's really the pull. So, and that is good to practice. We just need to find something to practice with. But yeah, it's, it's really kind of, you go into book one, you pull, you get right out of book one. Unless we're full pushing and you just want to hit stuff for bags and then we're already winning. All right, so stand back here. We've got some veterans in there. Go ahead and go to book one. So the three skill has some decent range, but not huge range. It's uh, it's 900. So we'll step up and we'll pull those, those veterans. Three, two, one, pulling up. And pulling. Just keep pulling them. He's going to try to block, so pull the other one. There's one further up there. Pulling. So it'll pull towards the middle of that area that you drop. It's not going to pull towards us specifically. So the... Pull that we've got combos really, really well with the Mesmer pull. So when you're hearing commanders talk about pulls and secondary pulls and stuff like that, that's that's what that's what's happening. You have the Guardians going to book one real quick, they yank them together, and then the Mesmers do their pull and pull them right off the wall. You can add in, you know, a necro pull in there in some situations, but it's it's really the guardian and the mesmer that are that are pulling that off the best. The trick is just not getting distracted. If if you forget what you're supposed to be doing and you're just go running around burning things at short range, like you don't even have the stats for that. That you're not really going to accomplish a whole lot. Get the skate deck down here. If just running doing a tower lord or something, I mean, aside from it doesn't need a lot for me to say, I go book one and get the bags, you know. That's that's really kind of the the basics of Firebrand. The rest of it is really just just kind of getting the feel of how long things last and knowing when to kind of cycle things through. If you have some resistance, you know that's going to buy you a little time so you can then take off the conditions and keep your boons going. Somebody just needs a little light heal. You can just throw a staff two on them. Maybe dodge roll at them. Give them a little shield coverage and get them back to the group. This build that I have has one trait that's off meta in uh, honor. 
normally they'd say take first the uh, the invigorated bulk word, but I I think the protecting revivor is great. Mostly because of the shield. So what it basically does is it casts shield 5 for you when you res somebody. So if someone's going to stomp them, it'll interrupt them and knock them back. So you're you're the pro reser. If somebody goes down, you can dodge roll over and res them real quick. Just not too far. Not worth losing you over somebody that goes off tag, you know. And somebody once told me the best damage a Guardian can do is empowering. Your, your might makes a pretty big deal. The amount of damage the rest of the group can do from your might is, is significant. But it does root you in place, and it's very easy for the enemy to see what you're doing. So if there's a call for an empower and you can only do like half of it and it's time to go, just cancel it and go. We'll, we'll get half the might at least. Now that was a good example right there. So this thing has crazy knockdowns. And we're not maintaining our stability enough. But more importantly, your elite is a group stun break. So if that happens and this damn griffin knocks us over, all of our immediate instinct needs to be hitting elite immediately. Watch out, watch out, it's about to happen. Alright, so I guess we had stability. And that's something good to practice on, like, on Keep Lords and stuff. Because they'll do that highly telegraphed jump up in the air or something and knock everyone down. And you can practice maintaining stability because, you know, you, you can see it coming. You can put up stability and kind of, you know, make it so your guys don't get knocked down. And that is basically Firebrand as a healer. It's it's just super, super helpful. Even if you're new to it and you are not fully geared, it's still super, super helpful. Because most of the stuff is, is just your, your boons that you're pumping out. Any questions on Firebrand at all? Um, if you have two Firebrands in a party, could one of them sub out Hollowed Ground for, um, what's it called? Purging Flames for the extra, uh, Pondy Cleanse? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that would be overkill probably to have two Hollowed Grounds in the group, so you'd swap it out. Okay. The other one, too, is, um... In the Virtues trait line, there is one other at the end. Instead of Battle Presence, there's Indomitable Courage. And that's one that people sometimes swap. But um, it doesn't overlap with two Guardians, so you'd only want one Guardian per party bringing that. Okay. Yeah, if you have... If you're in some random group or, you know, they're asking about Guardian stuff, they'll be like, oh, are you running this? Are you running that? And that's that's what they're talking about. Okay. capture this thing since we're here. Let's 
pull these things. Good. I don't know how those things just healed themselves. One thing to be cautious of is your shield five. Sometimes, I mean, not, you know, not too often, but sometimes you can knock people out of friendly damage. I say we had a well there and I just booped him out with my shield and, you know, he's not going to get damaged anymore. Let's build this thing. Get one ram, that should be fine. Sometimes you might see Guardians running Axe instead of Mace. That does give you an extra pull, which is pretty nice. And there is a version of this that's... Uh, they call it the Burn Brand. It's, it's basically the same thing. You just run Dire Gear and you switch a few traits to maximize burning damage. And it, you spend more time in book one, but uh, the idea is still the same. And a lot of the same stuff out of book three is still played exactly the same way. Try to tell me Chrono's best for commanding. Uh, I think I think Firebrand. I love all the stun breaks when I uh, run Firebrand. Yeah. Just feels safe. <laughs> yeah, you really should be tanky enough to just run through stuff and come back. Yeah. Not quite in the same way as uh, as Warrior. I mean, you do have to heal yourself and prevent it with blocks and such, but... How do we get in there? Here we go. Time to do some real the next level Guardianing is really when you can see hits coming and block them with Aegis ahead of time. Like, that's, that's like, high level. And that's that's when your Guardians are really changing the game. All right, guys. Well, that is our firebrand training. Let me know if any questions or issues or anything come up later. But awesome. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, guys.